Hello, good afternoon, welcome to Communities Live here on Sheffield Live 93.2 FM. And we have Republican, sorry, Republican singer, Saffron, good afternoon. Hello, how are you, Sheffield Live? We're very good here, how are you, Saffron? I'm fine, thank you. I was just saying one of my favourite bands is from Sheffield, Human League. <laughs> uh, you know, and, I think uh, that's... A, it's one of the legendary bands. I mean, I would love to. They be really are. Mm. And I've got I bought all their early records, and I I used to follow them. I used to go to all their gigs. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you. I mean, Saffron. I mean, we've got to talk a bit about Republica. So, tell us a bit about how it all started. Okay, so, um, well, basically, um, uh, I was signed to Warner Brothers and um, I had a publishing deal with Warner Chapel Music. So as a songwriter at a young age, I, I was learning my craft and learning different tunes and learning with uh, and, and in a band called Enjoy. So, and my mates were the prodigy. And at the time, we were just kind of on the acid house rave scene. Um, and um, the advancement in technology, like with the Human League, we were, you know, playing about with different electronic mm. sounds and um, writing our own tracks and stuff. And, um, yeah, I went to Deconstruction Records, which, um, you know, was um, kind of now, you know, a legendary kind of independent electronic label. And um, um, I had this idea for a band and... Uh, they loved the idea and I got a deal and because I had an idea in my head about how, how I'd like to sound, how the band would sound. So it'd be a mixture of electronic, a bit like the human league or simple minds, really a mixture of, you know, electronic rock guitar and, and, and great songs, big songs, you know. And I've got to ask, I mean, we mentioned Human League quite a few times, so I think I know uh, what I'm going to ask about influences, but I'm going to ask anyway. I mean, who yeah. are your main influences? And also, if there was anybody that you could work with, who would it be and why? Oh, gosh. Um, well, influences, gosh, there's so many. I mean, um, obviously, straight away, you know, Simple Minds, um, Human League, um, obviously, um, Heaven 17 as well, because of Martin Ware and stuff, Glenn Gregory, um, you know, obviously, Joy Division, um, Craftwork, um, Talking Heads, you know, um, and also, um, you know, great, um, strong female singers, um, you know, like Polystyrene, Toya, um, Slit. You know, um, Kate Bush, Stevie Nicks, uh, Hazel O'Connor, you know, um, Susie Sue, um, people that had very individual or unique uh, personalities, you know, um, and unique voices, like Ian Jury as well, or John Cooper Clark, you know, um, the, the, um, you know, um, Echo and the Bunnymen, The Cure. And the, the, my favourite band uh, when growing up was The Jam. And I went to see them when I was about 13 at Brighton Centre. And I, I was later to find out it was their final gig. But I was just like, wow, you know, I want to be you. You know, <laughs> it was that just excitement of growing up, you know, going down to Brighton and... Um, you know, uh, you know, it's just very special and going and buying, you know, seven inch vinyls and, uh, you know, finding out about all the bands and, and uh, the lyrics and, uh, you know, uh, going to lots of different gigs, you know, um, somewhere I've got a huge box. I kept all the tickets and, you know, uh, the gig stubs and, and uh, the promotions and stuff. And, and it's great now because, you know, when I get to meet, um, my idols in real life, I get to, you know, I've performed on stage with them and, and even toured with them like Toya and The Cure, you know, and Prodigy. And it's like, oh, my God, you know. <laughs> you know, I've been so lucky to be able to work with Gary Newman and people like that. And, I mean, um, I've got to ask, I mean, for anybody that wants to break into this kind of industry, I mean, what advice would you give to our listeners? Well, um, it has to be something that you, you 
absolutely love and are committed to because it's a very very tough industry to break into but I believe in the passion and love of music anyway so um, you know if you love writing songs and if you love playing music just get in bands just play with people you know um, do lots of gigs even if it's for free hey you're getting to do what you love you know and um, you know you could slowly build up a fan base you know whether that's in real life or or online um you know get yourself out there um today you have to be so more proactive i think as as a band you know um you know not rely so much on labels which which is a good thing you know um which is why we're signed to an independent rather than major um because also then you have control you know and you don't have people telling you what to do or what you have to wear and stuff yeah. which obviously i never listened to <laughs> i think i made that quite clear uh but uh you know hey it was a good job we wrote great songs you know so i was kind of lucky i was able to get away with it but um it takes a lot of hard work but you know my dream you know, it was to be in a band and tour America. You know, that's your whole thing. Um, and we got to do that, you know. But it's really, really tough work and hard work, but it's the best thing in the world, you know. So how many other people can say, oh, you know, I love my job. I do what I love every day. So, you know, um, I think that if you have um, that kind of tenacity and joy in your heart and for what you love and for your music, um, you know, find people also that, you know, that you can work with, that you get on well with and share the same interests and love of music as yourself. Um, You know, um, it's very hard, tough on your own. Um, But, um, you know, I I, I see some, you know, really exciting new new artists coming out now. Um, And there's a bit of danger coming back in the music, which um, I haven't heard for a long time, you know. I I mean, I remember, you know, I mean, I... I, um, I've got all the early Simple Minds uh, uh, vinyls, you know, like things from Great Cities and Empires and Dance, you know, and uh, even the early Human League, like Circus of Death and Being Boiled and stuff, yeah. you know, the really dark, early sounding Human League, which is, you know, fantastic. And wow, you know, you just like Kraftwerk or Gary Newman, just kind of dark, kind of melancholic, and it, it, it kind of, um, I think it really, after punk rock, it really um, connected with people that were perhaps different or outsiders, you know. Um, And um, I think that was really important as well, that you didn't have to be part of a group. You know, you didn't have to be the in thing or something. You know, you could be your own gang. (laughs) And that's how... the ethic that I had was with Republica and it is actually a punk rock ethic anyway you know it's like you know that that is part of punk I believe is it is about a, a feeling a lifestyle and being free to be yourself and be an individual you know and be proud yeah. <laughs> and I've got to ask I mean you recently uh, made a new uh, track called uh, Hallelujah so yeah. I mean, tell us a bit about how that came together. Was it a long process or did it come together quite quickly? Well, um it um we we had um um basically done quite a lot of the uh the bare bones of, of our album Damage Gods just before COVID. Mm. And and then um obviously um I found myself as a frontline key worker, a critical key worker, as I'm a qualified mental health and social care officer as well. And um, so for those years, um, you know, one day it was like, oh, oh gosh, my, where's my music gone? I might not have, never have it again. Um, so um, I used it a lot um, in my work as music therapy and, and, and it really does help. I think with anybody with mental health issues, music is kind of medicine for the soul, you know. And um, and during those years on the front line, it really taught me a lot about life. And so, hallelujah, I mean, many of the lyrics kind of express that. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, during lockdown, it's like, you know, even if you're in a council block and you could wave to someone, a stranger over the way, 
even that just that connection you know could be maybe your only you know connect uh, you know your only connection with another person that day but also music is a universal language and I think yeah. that that helps so many people um during COVID and, and I think it still does now and it's very very important and um and the hello Lulu is like yeah you know we're free and, and then I saw you get there hello Lulu, you know in real life <clears throat> and I think it um you know it kind of was especially for me um really taught me about life and and that it's in the very small things you know the small gesture smile hold someone's hand if they're sick um and just be there for them and to learn patience and um, learn to listen and that kindness you know is easy actually and um it can mean the world. The smallest thing can mean be the world to some other person. Yeah. And, I mean, you mentioned COVID as well. I mean, that was dark, dark times for everybody. And yeah. I'm going to ask you this, Aspen. I mean, how do you feel that music has, yeah. ch music has changed during COVID? Well, I think that, um, um, sadly, you know, um, the, the whole... Uh, in music and entertainment industry were decimated and you know um um you know I, I do have some quite strong views about that because um you know um you know you know music and art are worth value yes. and you know this country does produce some of the best music art theater dance in the world and um uh you know um I think it's so very important, you know, to support like your local live music independent, um, you know, venues, um, you know, galleries or libraries, um, um, you know, places where they have comedy nights or stuff, you know, um, because um, I think without that community and grassroots level, you know. There won't be any new artists or, or, or new um, people to discover. And I think that that would be such the greatest shame. But I think there's a, a real um, comeback, um, um, especially in the last year or so, that I've noticed that there's a few, very, as I say, some really exciting yeah. new artists that have just managed to break through. Um, you know, even on the punk scene and stuff, you know, like the Meth or Cassiette, and they're just really exciting. And Amal and the Sniffers, and they're just like, wow, these bands are really great, you know. And they've got they've got a kind of, um, you know, that fight in them that that um, you could hear in the Jam, or you know, um, you could hear in Sham Sixty Nine and all the Ruts, <laughs> who are my favourites as well. Uh, you know, and um, and you know that's part of Great Britain. You know, it's um, the, you know the diversity and equality of um everything that we produce. You know, whether that our craft, our radio, um, you know, theatre, you know, our comedy, um, you know, our, you know, Banks, Damien Hurst, you know, all all Tracy, I mean, all these amazing people, um, you know, and um, you know, um, that's. Why I call my album "Damaged Gods" because I think it's like we all are, you know, in some ways. But actually, that's okay, you know. Sure. That's okay to be damaged. You, you know, you don't have to be perfect. You know, this whole thing about oh, you've got to look like this, or you. No, you don't. <laughs> no, I I totally don't. agree with you. I totally agree with you on that. I, I'm totally like, no, you don't have to look like that at all. Because <clears throat> usually, you know, the image or, or, or something that sadly has been put across, especially to young minds, doesn't exist anyway. And also, it, it's not real. It's here and it's it's what's out there, you know, get outside and, you know, um, you know, do, there's a huge mental health crisis as well now. And, and I think music um, and art and radio and 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 theatre and uh, you know comedy and and just social activity and inter interaction is so important now yeah. you know so that we can get back um and understand 
that, that that's what we share is what is what's most important. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Li live music is 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 the best of that, you know. And I mean, speaking of live music, I mean, I have watched you on YouTube with you performing at the festival, and you were performing one of your biggest hits, is "Baby, we are ready to go." And yeah. everybody singing. I mean, that must they be do. so electric. They do. It's 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 extraordinary, you know. Or you because you, you just feel so lucky because they sing it for you. Um, you know, and we played Huddersfield uh, last Friday at the parish, and it was just absolutely round to the rafters. And I I didn't have to sit. I was just put the you know microphone out to the audience and they literally sang all the words and you know this great sort of atmosphere it was electric you know and um it was superb so you know everyone's had a great night it's, it's a great atmosphere and and uh yeah we've got to get back into that you know in your local towns and your local cities you know it's so important <laughs> Definitely. And I mean, other than you mentioned Huddersfield, but if there's any uh, venue that you would uh, like to be uh, in the near future, where would you like to go? Um, It's so difficult because we played so many thousands of the smallest to the biggest. Um, <clears throat> but I love playing big festivals, um, you know, and but also I'm, um, like I said, like I just feel I love the small event when every, you can see everyone and you touch them, and yeah. I, I don't re, I don't like to feel isolated. If I can't see the audience, then it's kind of this just this blackness, you know. I like to feel see that they're there and you have to touch their hands because they want to touch, and and then it you know then that's a, a connection straight away. Um, and then they're, they're smiling at you, singing your own lyrics back at you. I mean, there's there's no better, you know, feeling than that. You know, watching people have a great night. And, um, and you know, for us to still be doing what we love is such a privilege, you know. So please come to our tour and have a great night out. <laughs> I also want to say, I mean, you mentioned festivals. Please come to Tramlines one day. Oh, we'd love to. Please invite us. <laughs> We'd love to play the next year tram lines. <laughs> so I mean, and you mentioned so you meant we talked about uh, your new single and your upcoming album. Also, yes. I want to talk about about uh, is there any future uh, projects that you're currently working on, or is it all secret at the moment? No, no, it's not secret. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, um, what um, I I. I I made a vow or pact to myself that after after lockdown restrictions lifted, that um I just really wanted to write as many songs as possible. Um I've been so lucky in that my publishers have been so amazing and that um you know, so many of our songs are used still now in films and TV and um adverts in sports especially. So, you know, there's sports fans all over the world that might not know me or the band, but they know the song. It means yeah. something to them. And their, you know, that their, their team and their family have got season ticket holders. And, you know, um I played I sang at the World Cup and Lionel Messi was five foot behind me and I nearly fainted. <laughs> And uh, Sunderland, you know, play our song, Stills are on our song. Um, and, um, you know, Captain Marvel used uh, Ready to Go and um, Drop the Gorgeous was used in the original Scream. And, you know, we've uh, we've been in Yellow Jackets, which is um, a huge success, Ted Lasso, you know, Cool Summer. And um, it's great, you know, that, that, that people... Uh, and young, you know, little kids kind of like know know my song. It's like, how did that happen? <laughs> you know, so that, that's really refreshing. You know, um, so yes, I want to co-write and collaborate with lots of different people, and I will be doing so as soon as I've got five minutes break. <laughs> so yeah, probably. Um, I don't know if I'll have much time. Um. You know, but I, I will find time, yeah. Yeah, because cause some of um, um the people that I collab want, uh, have asked or we, we've been to collaborate with uh, live near me in Brighton and stuff. 
So, um, yeah, it's it's just also they've got lots of busy schedules too. So, um, you know, so I, I think, um, you know, I've got a few years left in me that I just want to write and, and, and uh, you know, um, produce and create as many songs for people um, as I possibly can as my legacy. And you know what? We can't wait to hear the future. Uh, oh, happening. bless you. Yeah. And I mean, to, for our listeners who want to uh, follow you, do you have like yeah. social media? What people can follow? Yeah, you on, yeah, like, X yeah. On yeah, um, um, well, Republica official Facebook and Instagram, um, X Twitter, um, for some weird reason, um, won't let me back on because they think I'm not me, <laughs> even though it is it is me. I don't know what that is, but hey, I'm on Threads now, so I, I'm finding out that that's a really exciting little platform. And um, uh, uh, my best friend's daughter's going to introduce me to Tickety Talk soon. <laughs> so watch out. <laughs> I don't know how it works anyway. I mean, I press all the wrong buttons. But look, if it, if it helps my band and my music, um, out, you know, promote and get out there, why not? You know, it's fun. Why not? <laughs> And you know what? I don't think you're not the only one who doesn't know TikTok. I mean, I've got to put my hands up because I don't know how, how TikTok works. So, no, 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 I, <laughs> but hey, I'll learn. <laughs> so, so, I mean, and my final, my final question for you, Saffron, is uh, because I like to give the final word to you. Is what would you like to say to our listeners who is listening right now? Oh, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone listening to Sheffield Live right now. And um, I believe radio is one of the most um, greatest British institutions. And, you know, it's the conduit for music and for, for communication and talking and, you know, and finding out the news and stuff. And, um, yeah, I think it's ingrained in, in our history. And I, I think we should fight to, to keep all the regional radio stations, community radios going as well as the big national ones and thank you so much for listening um and thank you for listening to um republic of songs as well thank you so much Saffron. it's been a pleasure thank you very much for and you thank you my love please come to a gig you're very welcome and i'll put you on the guest list if you'd like to come and bring your friends or family i would love to thank you very much Saffron. all right my love you take care